You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah B'Shem Israel 783, 2023. This week's Parsha in Chutz Laaretz is Parsha's Shlach, and in Parsha's in Eretz Yisrael it's Parsha's Korach. And at the very end of the Parsha of Parsha's Shlach, we have a connection to the beginning of Parsha's Korach, as our sages tell us, the end of the Parsha speaks about the mitzvah of tzitzis, we'll see more about it in a moment. And the very beginning of Parshas Korach, our sages tell us that Korach, when he came to argue with Moshe Rabbeinu, it says, Vayikach Korach, he took, what did he take? As we'll see, he took a pair of tzitzis, and he said, if a garment is completely woven of tcheles, out of the special royal wool, royal blue or royal purple wool, so... Uh, why do you need a, a string on the on the four corners, or do you need a string on the four corners? We'll see what the implication of that question was. But we see that there's a clear connection between the two parshias. Concept of tzitzis, we need to understand what is the idea of tzitzis. We need to understand what was Korach's challenge to Moshe Rabbeinu, what was he coming to try to say, what was his failure, what was his mistake. And what do we learn, what can we learn and apply to our lives as a lesson from these two parshias. So I'd like to first read to you from the, the end of the Medrash in Parsha Shlach. It says, The Torah tells us that when we put on tzitzis, the purpose of the mitzvah of tzitzis is to remind us of the, the blue. It's supposed to remind us of the sea, which reminds us of the sky, which reminds us of the Kisya Yaakov, the holy, the holy chair, the holy throne of Hashem, the fact that Hashem is our king. The tzitzis are to remind us they hang out of the side of our garment. They remind us that we are a servant of Hashem. We have a uniform. And it's to remind us that we shouldn't veer after our hearts and after our eyes. It's very easy to be drawn after our emotions, after that which we see, to desire things that we see. Right? Says the Medrash, The heart and the eyes are that which causes the body to do something wrong. They cause the body to act in ways that are inappropriate. Right? The heart and the eyes, those are the motivators of the human being. What we see, what we desire in our hearts, the, the thoughts that we have, these are the things that move our bodies, cause our body to be motivated. So the Pasik says, the purpose of the tzitzis is to remember and to do all of my mitzvahs, to do all of the commandments. Now, in thinking about it, you know, there's a concept of sur merav, asay taiv, steer away from doing evil and do good. You know, on one hand, we need to stop ourselves from doing bad, but one of the eitzes, one of the advice, one of the pieces of advice that our sages tell us as far as turning away from bad is by doing good. Right? A human being can only do one thing at a time. Of course, we can have many motivations at the same time, but we can only do one thing at a time. If a person is involved in mitzvahs, if a person is involved in fulfilling the commandments, if my focus is to do good, so then naturally I will turn away from doing evil. <laughs> Says the Medrash, it's a mashal, it's an analogy to somebody who fell into the water. He fell off a ship, he fell into the water. <laughs> Beautiful mashal. The tzitzis are like a, a a rope, a life rope. The the kvarnit, the the captain of the ship, sees a man overboard, and he and he throws out a, a rope, and he says to him, "Grab onto this rope and don't let go." Shem tanicheu and lechachaim. If you let go, you'll you'll die. Avkach amar lemakadosh baruch hu Yisrael. In the same way, Hashem says to the people of Israel. Here, here is the tzitzis, here is the life, the lifeline. Here is the rope I'm throwing out to you to save you. Remind yourselves through this rope, remind yourselves of all of the mitzvahs. If you attach yourself to the commandments of Hashem, if you hold on, if you attach yourself, if you hold on to the lifeline of the Torah, if you hold on to Hashem, to His commandments, you will have life. V'chein hu aimer, Pasuk says in Mishle, in, in uh, Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 13, Hachazik b'musar, 
hold on to Musar, hold on to the teachings of the Torah, hold on to that which the Torah teaches us in regards to becoming a good person, steering ourselves away from negative influences, from those things that our hearts desire, which ultimately can pull us down. Al teref ki hi chayecha. Do not let go of this protection. It's something that gives you life. In the Yisam Kedoshim, the Pesach says, you shall be holy. The purpose of the, the mitzvah of tzitzis is to remind us to, to steer away from that which our hearts and our, our eyes desire. To remember the mitzvahs, to hold on to the mitzvahs, to hold on to the commandments, and you'll be holy. What is the purpose of the mitzvahs? What is the purpose of, co- of fulfilling the commandments? What happens? What is the poil yaitza? What is the, the net result of the fact that we fulfill the commandments of Hashem? We become holy. We become sanctified. Interestingly, the goyim fear us. The nations of the world, when we are doing what's right, when we are fulfilling the Torah, the Goyim, the, the non-Jews are afraid of us. Right here in Eretz Yisrael, I've heard many stories like this, that the Arabs know that if we are doing what's right, our God protects us. They know that we have the true rights to Yushalayim, to Arabayis. We have the true rights to build our Beis HaMikdash. The Mokam HaMikdash, their place is just a a pathetic, a pathetic, I don't even want to use the word replacement, a pathetic, I don't even know what to say. It's nothing. They know the truth. If we're doing what's right, if we believe in ourselves, if we believe in our claim to Eretz Yisrael, to Yerushalayim, to the Makam HaMikdash, so then they're afraid of us. When we are doing what's right, when we are committed to Torah, so that's what makes us holy. The Torah, the mitzvahs, that's what makes us special, that's what makes us holy. When we, when we separate ourselves from the mitzvahs, that's where we get in trouble. We get in trouble and then we become mechulalim, heaven forbid. We become emptied. We become emptied. We become empty shells that just look like, look like Jews. We look like we're moral and we, or, you know, we ascribe to great morality and the the wonderful things of the the ideals of liberalism and and climate change and all these kinds of silly, silly, non important, not truly important. This is not really what makes us into Jews. It's not really what makes us into good people. There's only one true morality. It's the Torah's definition of morality, and the the tzitzis remind us of that, and they remind us to be holy. Because true holiness means we've attached ourselves to Hashem and we, are, we, are, we have a, a life that's full. We're not mechulalim. Kedusha is the opposite of, of mechulal. Mechulal means chol, means, means mundane, but it means empty. It means devoid. Kedusha means full. I am full of holiness. I am full of God's Spirit. I'm full of true life. When I hold on to the, when I grab on to the tzitzis, so then I'm grabbing on Ta'akadosh Baruch Hu. It's a beautiful thing. The Pesach says that, that when Mashiach comes, when the Messiah arrives, so the nations of the world, ten non-Jews will come and grab the garment of a Jew and say, take us with you for God is with you. It's not a coincidence that they're grabbing the four-cornered garment. They're grabbing the tzitzis because the tzitzis represent the, the lifeline, the rope. How do we get into Hashem in the right way? In the balanced way, without making, as the Arabs do, God to be too judgmental, and without making, as the Christians do, an idol out of Hashem, out of a human being, making an idol out of a false version of Hashem, over overly permissive, overly forgiving, finding the perfect balance between a God who does forgive as a parent does, but also demands of his children without being like a like a an evil lord lording over lording over his underlings right they're going to grab onto the four corners of our garments why because the the tzitzis represent the lifeline how we get kedusha how we fill ourselves properly with with god's presence with connection to hashem now let's take a look back in the second parsha the Parsha that is being read in Eretz Yisrael, which those in Chutzlars will read next week, in Parsha's Korach. So, 
Pasuk says, Vayikach Korach. Korach took. What did he take? Lokach talitoi v'holach litol etzim yishtoi. It's very interesting. He took his talus and he went to get advice from his wife. His wife gave him bad advice. His wife told him that he should fight against Moshe Rabbeinu. And he took his talus and he said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Kikol ha'am, kikol ha'kal, kulam kedoshim. Interestingly, right? The entire nation, we just said that the tzitzis is something which makes us holy, which connects us to Hashem, which connects us to the truth of who we are, to the essence. And he took this thing and he said, he said to Moshe Rabbeinu, we're all holy. We're all these strings. We don't need a lifeline. We don't need a rope. We don't need something sticking out of the side of our garment. The whole garment is holy. That was what he said. Now I'd like to understand, as we read this, I'd like to understand what is it that Korach what is it that Korach was trying to say? What was the essence of his argument? What is the significance that he went to his wife and asked her for advice? Let's say he would have decided to do this on his own. Let's say he wouldn't have asked his wife for advice. Why is, the, why is it important for us to know that he went to his wife? What is the significance of this point? Let's read on in the Medrash. Now what was, what was this problem predicated upon? Says the Medrash. There was something that happened previously that irked Korach. That that brought out the contrast between who he was going to be, the chashivus, the importance that he would have, as opposed to Aaron Akayin, right? Because he comes out saying, Aaron, you, why did you appoint him to be the Kohen Gol, the high priest? Why did you make him to have that his children are priests? What about the Levi- the Levites? There was a challenge to the chosenness of Aaron. So. How did that, how was that underscored? Because the Pasuk says that Moshe was commanded to take the Levim from out of the children of Israel. So they were shaved of all of the hair that was on their bodies. So this was done to Korach. Korach was one of the Levim. His chilachs are al Yisrael. After he was shaved of all of his hair, his his entire body, his facial hair, his hair on his head. So they they went back, he went back and he started walking and nobody recognized him. And they realized it was him and they said, Who did this to you? He said it was Moshe who did this to me. Remember the Hareya Tatar? Not only this, they were they grabbed me, but they took me and they they by my hands and my feet, and they were shaking me. They were waving me in each direction, and they were saying, "You are pure." What did they do? Look at the contrast to what Moshe did to Aaron. Dressed him up beautifully, and he dressed him like a like a bride. He had beautiful clothing, Aaron Akayim, beautiful the big day kahuna. And he put him into Al Mayd. He put him into the into the tent of meeting. And here he left me to wander out amongst the Jews, looking looking terrible. So the enemies of Moshe, which, as my son said, Moshe Dov, he said it was Dasan and Aviram. They began to fight with the Jewish people. I'm sorry to to cause the Jewish people to fight with Moshe. Look at this nepotism. Moshe Rabbeinu has made himself into a king. Aaron, his brother, is the high priest. Aaron's sons are the, the, the priests who are next in line. We have to give gifts. You have to give truma, meiser. You have to give 24 different matanes to the coin. There are 24 gifts that are given to the coin. Look at this incredible way that he's taking the power to himself. And he's taking money to himself. They claim that Moshe was in it for the money. They claim that Moshe was in it to give his brother and his brother's children favoritism. So they all gathered in front of Moshe Rabbeinu and they said, This is not okay. We don't accept this. We don't accept this kind of behavior. 
And he says to them, Korach says, Look, you, you've done more to us than what they did in Egypt. You've, you've enslaved us more than what they did in Egypt. You're just making a, you're just lording over us once again. We already had a lord. His name was Pharaoh. And now you are being our lord. So what's the difference between Pharaoh and you? We're not interested. We're, we're, we'd rather be in Egypt. Everything was much better in Egypt. There was much more food. There was much more of everything. So they wanted to stone Moshe. Pasuk says, Moshe heard, and he fell on his face. Moshe says, I'm not interested in, in being a king. I'm not interested in lording over you. I don't need Aaron to have any kahuna gedolah to have the high priestship. What, why are you complaining about Aaron? He hasn't done anything. Moshe says to Hashem, Master of the world, is this not what you commanded me? You are to bring Aaron, your brother, and his children, to bring them close. How could it be? We've done what's right. We've done your command. We have fulfilled your command. Hashem, you asked that I bring Aaron to be the Kohen God, the high priest, and his children to be the, the next in line, the priests. They're, gonna, they're trying to kill us. Omar... So, it seems to me, who's the Omar? Who spoke? It seems to me that it's Hashem responding. The morning will show. The morning will come and will prove to whom, who is the one that is special to Hashem, who's been chosen by Hashem. Ma'okain, what is, what is this expression? The morning will come and it will show. What is this expression? Hashem says, look, if all of the magicians in the entire world who are able to play around with nature, if they would all join together and try to turn the morning into the evening, where there's a different gear of turning the evening into the morning, they would try to change the day, change the order of nature, they will not be able to. And just like I separated between day and night, and I made it something which is incontrovertible, it's impossible to 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 contradict. So too, so too, Aaron and his sons. Aaron is has been separated to be holy of holies. Okay, and that's what went on in the continuation of the story. Now. What was Korach's taina? What was Korach saying? What was he trying to claim? And what was Moshe Rabbeinu's response and Hashem's response, really? What was what's what's going on here? And how can we also bring it back to the concept of the tzitzis? How do we understand the the special power of tzitzis? And I was thinking about it also just to to, to sharpen the, one of the one of the questions in regards to tzitzis. It says. In the mushal, it said, and this is connected here to Korach as well. It said in the mushal, in the analogy, that there's a guy who's drowning in the water. He's drowning in the water, and the and the captain of the ship throws him a rope and says, "Hold on to this rope for your dear for dear life. If you want to live, hold on to this rope. If you let go, you'll die." Now, does the captain really need to say that? Does the captain really need to say to him, "Hold on to the rope, or, or you'll die"? I mean, the guy is drowning. He knows if he doesn't hold on to that rope, he'll die. So. There's something going on here which is very much the the statement of Korach. Korach was drowning in a sea of blue, we could say, when he mentions this whole concept of the tzitzis, of the tchelis, of the garment which is completely blue, and he's drowning in the sea, saying that everyone is the same. But he doesn't want out of the sea, he wants to stay in his mistaken presumption of how life should look, of how things should be. What was his mistake? And what is the sea that you need to be told you have to pull yourself out of, otherwise you will think that you belong there and you sh- it's better to drown. Or the drowning is actually living. Korach is saying like this. 
He is saying, look, we don't need leaders. We don't need anyone special. That's what he means when he says that the entire garment is blue. We don't, we don't need a lifeline. We don't need a lifeline because we're, we're not drowning in the water. We are living up by the Kisei Kapu. We're all connected to the holiest place in the world, the throne of Hashem's glory. We are all equal in the eyes of Hashem. And there's a lot of truth to it. And there's a lot of, you know, Karach was a wise person. He wasn't a fool. People want everyone to be equal. People want to say that everyone is the same, right? That's that's one of the that's one of the greatest mistakes of Western culture, which is coming to a head today, in all of the in many many different areas, which I prefer not to mention. Everything has to be equal. Everyone's the same. Women and men are the same. W- women have to do the same thing that men do. They need to wear talis and tefillin and daven at the kotel, just like men do. They need to. They need to uh, work and bring in money. Forget about their job as as parents, as as mothers of children, which is their God given merit. There's chus. Everyone has to be the same. That's the mistake that Korach makes. He says that everyone is the same, everyone is equal, and everyone is connected. And it's true that at a certain in a certain way, everyone is connected. Everyone is. Right, we all have a tzelam elokim. We all are connected to Hashem, but the reality is, and this is what this is what Hashem is saying when He says, "Just like I separated between night and day, there's also a specialness to Aaron This is how Hashem created the world: that there's a hierarchy, that there are some who are leaders, there are some who are greater, and there are some who need to follow. We need to be reminded that you don't have that same sense, that natural sense." of what's right. They're not as connected. They're not as... They're not naturally as holy. There's a kvarnit. There's a captain of the ship. He's standing above with his rope, throwing it down to the person who's in the water and saying, you gotta come up. And the person who's in the water could say, hey, it's nice, I love swimming. doesn't realize that he's drowning. He doesn't realize he's in danger. He doesn't realize that living in a world where everyone is the same, so to speak, is a world of absolute destruction. Is a world which is mechulo, which is emptied of holiness. Because that is not the ideal. The ideal is not that everyone be the same. The ideal is that everyone be the best individual who they are. Exactly how Hashem created them. Exactly who you are is who you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to work with. Korah says No. We're all the same. We're all able to, we're all able to to bring carbonus. We're all able to bring a katiris. They knew that Nadav and Aviu died bringing the katiris. So obviously there are some people who shouldn't be bringing it, or there are some situations where they shouldn't be bringing it. No, we all can do. We can all go lift naiv lifting. We can all go into the holy of holies. We all can have full access to a relationship with Hashem, which of course is ridiculous. It's not true. And I think that part of what the Medrash is saying here, he went to his wife. Now there's two things here. Why didn't he make the decision on his own? Why couldn't he be the one to make the decision? We find great sages, there are stories about great tzaddikim, and they said to their wives, I'm the one who's going to make all of the spiritual decisions in, in our family, because the man is the one who's the most learned most connected to Torah, the most halachic understanding, generally speaking, so people who are tzaddikim. And you, he said to his wife, will will make all of the decisions that have to do with Gashmi, that have to do with our physical reality. When he went to his wife, he's, he's trying to make her equal. Now, that's not to say that there aren't incredibly wise women. There are plenty of incredibly wise women, and certainly it's a good idea to get advice from those around us. Sometimes they see things better than we do. But the point I believe that the Medrash is trying to bring out is that he went back to his wife instead of being the man, instead of being the one who's making the decision intellectually, correctly, spiritually, from a spiritual perspective, he went and he asked her. But there's another thing that that in in a relationship between a man and a woman, this is not exactly the point of the Medrash, but I think it's an important point to understand. There's a holiness... There's a holiness that things aren't just everyone equal, everyone can do whatever they want, right? In a marriage, the man 
and the woman are holy unto each other. It's called kedushin. It's called holiness, right? It's you're me, you add for me. I'm me, you add for you. You're my appointed spouse, and I'm your appointed spouse. Nobody else has access. This is holiness. This is absolute holiness. And there's a holiness in the relationship that we have with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not everybody can get inside of the Holy of Holies. Not all human beings are created the same. Not all human beings have the same relationship with Hashem. The Jewish people have 613 mitzvahs. The nations of the world have only seven. It's important to understand we are not all equal. We are not all the same. There's a liberal mindset which has crept into our own hashkafa, which is a dangerous hashkafa, that everyone is the same. Let's be a nation like all the other nations. We are not a nation like all the other nations. We are special. We have the tzitzis. We hold on to that life rope, which is called the mitzvahs in the Torah. Hashem made us special. We have a special obligation. We have a special purpose in this world. We are the leaders, and there are leaders, and we need to know that. And we need to respect our leaders. We need to know how to grab on to our leaders. And not make the mistake and think that everyone is the same. Korach makes the mistake and says, everything is, everyone is the same. Moshe Rabbein responds, Kodesh Baruch Hu responds and says, just like you understand there's a difference between day and night, let's not confuse day and night. Right? You, can't, you can't magically change day into night and night into day. So too, you can't change. Who is the one showing the light? The Boker V'yoida. Who is the one who is the light of the day? It's the Tzadikim, it's the chosen ones of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And we need to recognize that, we need to know that, because it's an important understanding that we need to have. We're not all the same. We're not all equal. But we all have our job, and our job is to try our best to hold on to the life rope, which is the Taira, the life-giving rope, the mitzvahs, the tzitzis, the kisei hakavah, the throne of Hashem's glory. I want to bless you, and I ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us that we should be able to have the right balance, the right understanding, the right not to turn after our hearts, not to turn after our eyes, but rather to hold on to the rope, to pull ourselves out, not to think when we're drowning that we're having a nice time swimming, but rather to recognize that we need to be pulled out through our connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to the rope, the life, the life rope of the Torah. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.